Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about silverfish, centipedes, and millipedes. I want to thank Chris from DIY with Chris. He's been sharing a bunch of our YouTube videos from our Fix It Home Improvement channel. I would like to thank him as well. And Cindy would like to thank you, Chris. Uh, He has a really nice website that he's building. It's called DIY Home Projects for Every Homeowner.com. So silverfish have been around for hundreds of millions of years. In fact, some of the oldest fossils trapped in amber are silverfish, and they look almost identical to modern ones. So they were actually around when dinosaurs roamed the earth? No way. (laughs) Interesting, isn't it? And they were a big problem in the Old West. So in the 1800s, men were wearing starch detachable collars on their shirts, Uh which is really weird. And silverfish just love starch. So they were just abundant. I guess in these old hotels, some of the diaries of these people in the Old West, they said that silverfish, they'd open the drawer because they'd have a collection of all these different collars that they would attach to their shirts. Uh And I guess silverfish were a big problem with that. And then they loved the old wallpaper paste that held wallpaper. And they eat paper too, so they would just terrorize the uh, wallpaper in some of these hotels. You know what's weird about the detachable collars? Oh, boy. Uh, uh, the lady who invented it, she got so fed up with that ring around the collar with her husband. Mm-hmm. So in 1827, she decided just to cut off her husband's collar so she could bleach him and wash him really good. And then she would stitch him back in place. And two or three people noticed what she was doing, and she started making them. Just from this lady hating ring around the collar, she created an industry. Interesting. <laughs> So, silverfish. Yeah, I don't even know what to say to that. (laughs) So let's get back on track, shall we? All right. What are silverfish? So, silverfish are an insect. They're tear-shaped and usually about a half inch long, wingless. They have a very hard exoskeleton. And they almost look fish-like because they wiggle when they move like a fish. Do they have legs? They have six legs, two long antenna, and they have three antenna that come off the back of them. And depending on the species, they can be laying two to 20 eggs a day. Well, that's super and, gross. And they're thriving in moist, dark areas. They don't like lights, so you're going to so find they, them. Are, is this like an inside thing or an outside thing? They live outside, but they come in through cracks and crevices around your foundation. And then they'll actually crawl up into the attic, crawl spaces, basements. They love to be in laundry rooms, kitchens and bathrooms, especially if you have any leaks behind the walls. Huh. And then they'll set up camp behind the baseboards. They, so do they like bite or anything? No, they're not they're not a problem as far as biting humans, but they can definitely be destructive because they love to feed on any type of sugar. They like shampoos and, and the soaps in your bathroom. They love the glue in books that hold the pages together. They'll eat paper, they'll eat cotton, so different clothing. They can put holes in cardboard, like cereal boxes and the cereal, so you'll find them in your pantries. And then they'll actually feed on the dead skin cells that we shed, you know, if they don't have another source of food. So they can really set up a a large colony in your home. And they love humidity above 50%. And what's interesting, uh, silverfish are wild. They actually drink by absorbing moisture in the air through a special tube in their rectum. Yuck. (laughs) So how do you control them? So the first thing you'd want to do is make sure you clean up all the papers. If you have newspapers around, boxes, paper bags, you don't want to have stacks of those, especially in dark areas or damp areas like pantries or your basement. You want to control and reduce the humidity. So similar to dust mites, we talked about them loving humidity over 50%. Mm -hmm. Lowering your humidity is key because they don't thrive as well under 50%. I would say a hygrometer is really a nice thing that most homeowners should have because you're going to know your humidity level. So a couple products you can use to reduce the amount of humidity in your home or rooms in your home. One is Damprid. It's D-A-M-P-R-I-D. This uses calcium chloride to absorb the humidity. It turns it into a solution, and then you have to keep replacing the calcium chloride. But it does a really nice job. It's inexpensive. Uh, they sell it. It comes in a bunch of different containers. Yeah, they do a nice so job. There's tubs. There's you know the refill packs. There's there's stuff you can hang in your closets. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Very simple to use. 
Evadry we saw at one of the last shows we went to. It's EVA-DRY. Mm-hmm. And they use silica gel on this, which, like silica gel, those are the desiccants you see, like in vitamin bottles or, you know, areas where they're trying to remove humidity. Right. And this has a really interesting little unit. So the silica gel, instead of dissolving like a calcium chloride, this absorbs the moisture. And then you can reuse this, and it'll actually last up to 10 years so each year. we just unit. did a video on this? Yeah, so on our Fix It Home Improvement channel on YouTube, you can see what it looks like and how it works. And then that Evadry company also makes really tiny dehumidifiers. Right. So very nice for just areas of your house. The humidity you're shooting for is around 50% or a little under in the summer and around 40% in the winter. Now, outside the home, you're going to want to seal any cracks around the house, especially in the foundation. You want to divert the rainwater away from the foundation of your house. The EPA says that gutters should extend a minimum of five feet from the foundation, and they actually recommend that you have a four-foot bed around the foundation. So we were talking in the last episode about landscaping landscaping beds and and most landscapes are just saying make them huge right and that's actually beneficial the further you're getting grass away from your foundation so you're not sitting there watering this grass and that rainwater is has a potential to get into the house which raises the humidity in basements and crawl spaces I was reading a lot of different recommendations on how far you should extend your downspouts Mm -hmm. and State Farm Insurance Company says it should be 10 feet away they found that houses have less problems with moisture in basements and crawl spaces when they have it 10 feet away. Wow. You should really grade the earth. So the soil should drop about 6 inches, 10 feet away from your home. Mm-hmm. So this is where you would use the downspot extensions? Yes, and you can get those at any hardware store. Another thing you want to do outside is put an insect border control around the foundation. And there's a couple really highly rated products. Taro makes something called Ant Killer Plus, mm-hmm. and this does a wide variety of crawling insects, not just ants. Which I they, mean, when you're in the aisle in the hardware store, make sure that you're actually reading the label and what what these products do, because a lot of them say ant. Yeah, it's funny how they'll have one main insect on their packaging, and right. it does a wide variety of insects depending on the chemical. And I like this Ant Killer Plus bag because it's a shaker bag. It almost has like a, uh, how would you describe it? So this is the one from Taro? Yes. Yeah, so it's almost like a Ziploc bag at the bottom where there's a mesh that you shake it and the product comes out the bottom. You're not getting your hands dirty. When you're done with it, it zips back up. Yeah, so very convenient. It's very nice. Mm Mm-hmm. Ortho makes a really nice product and rated very high called Home Defense Max. Mm -hmm. And you can use the liquids inside and out. And then they also have a granular that you can use outside. And they recommend that you're using a 12-inch wide band all the way around the house. Ortho has a line of products. They're Ortho Elementals, and these are less toxic products. They have one called Insect Killer, and this uses soybean oil and oil of cloves that kill insects and also repel them and bear advanced they have a line called natria and they also use soybean oil what's interesting is this is the soybean oil will actually kill insects it, it especially if you spray an insect it coats their body and they're not able to breathe they suffocate so they die and the cdc found that soybean oil actually repels mosquitoes as effectively as four percent deet Really? And it's one of the few natural things that you can use to repel mosquitoes. So all natural. So these are a couple of nice products that you can use around the house if you're worried about kids or pets. And with most of these insect control, when you put it down, especially anything that's wet, you want to wait till it's dry before you let kids or pets play in that area. Mm -hmm. An interesting study I was reading, they say that wood ash... If you take the ashes, let's say you have a fireplace and you build up all this ash, if you're constantly putting it around the foundation of your house and working it in lightly with a rake, that it actually helps dry out the soil and so it's less attractive to insects so you don't have as many insect colonies right against your house. So So what do you do? So you're making your foundation unappealing to silverfish, millipedes, and centipedes. Since we haven't talked about those very much. <laughs> and then you know what loves silverfish and centipedes? Yes. What? But 
surprise our listeners. Chickens. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to raise some chickens, you'll have less centipedes and silverfish in your house. Well, when we were doing research, I was uh, I saw this as one of the preventative stuff. I see, <laughs> hey, get some chickens. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> there we go. go. Now, inside the house, using sticky traps is nice to catch a few crawling insects. Nothing about having sticky traps in your house is nice, because if you have sticky traps, you have some sort of problem with roaches, mice, bed bugs, you know, all the disgusting stuff that we talk about. So with a sticky trap, I would always pick one that's covered versus like the sticky trays, especially if you have kids or pets. And PIC makes a nice one, P-I-C. They have something called a roach prison. Right. And very easy to use. It pops open, and we're able to monitor what's going on in our house. One tip I saw was to take your daily newspaper, and after you read it, you get it wet. You roll it up and put it, put the rubber band back on it, and just leave it out where you saw silverfish. And they're attracted to the moisture and the paper, and that'll fill with silverfish during the night. Then you take it outside and throw it out. That's so and gross. You, <laughs> you keep doing that. So there you go. For the rest of your life, or what? <laughs> Till you have no more silverfish. <laughs> An excellent product you can use inside to kill silverfish or really any crawling insects is diatomaceous earth, and this is completely non-toxic. We've talked about it before. Yeah, how many times do you think we've talked about it before? (laughs) A lot. But what's funny is I think a lot of people get confused when they get into the insect aisle in a hardware store. There's a lot of different things. Because a lot of these labels do do not say diatomaceous earth on it so and that's what we're preaching here but it says ant killer it says roach killer it you know but the main ingredient is diatomaceous earth right so like saint gabriel's organics their label says in big letters insect dust pick says roach control safer just says ant jt eaton says kills bed bugs and it's wild that it's right it, in a lot of these hardware stores, you're going to see this merchandise right next to toxic right. chemicals. And so really take the time and read the label, because if you see something with diatomaceous earth, this is completely non-toxic. You can use it around kids or pets. When you put this down, you would want to wear a dust mask because you don't want to breathe it in. But if it gets on your body, it's not absorbed. It's just mechanically killing insects. So these are the fossilized remains of microscopic algae that work like you know broken shards of glass, cutting up the exoskeleton of insects and killing them. It also absorbs that waxy or oily coating that insects have mm-hmm. to dehydrate them and kill them. So just very effective, really safe in the house. As long as it stays dry, it works forever. Yeah, amazing, mm-hmm. amazing. So just a great product to be using around the house for your insects. Another completely non-toxic insecticide you can use is silica gel. So this is the same thing in Evadry. Right. (laughs) And what it does is it will actually absorb hundreds of times its weight in moisture. So if this gets onto insects, so you blow this under baseboards and cabinets, insects walk through it and it strips the waxy or oily coating they have and it kills them through dehydration. The thing you have to be careful with with silica gel is most of these are professional products and they add pyrethrins to it. So there's a product called Evergreen Pyrethrum Dust. This is a silica gel and they add a little bit of pyrethrum. Very effective at killing all crawling insects, but you need to be careful uh, if you have cats in the house with this. Why? Because it's highly toxic to cats and fish. So pyrethrin is the natural organic compound from the chrysanthemum flower. About 1000 BC, the Chinese were actually crushing up chrysanthemum plants and putting it around their house to kill insects. Wow. Interesting, huh? Yeah, what were the Egyptians doing? (laughs) They were jealous. (laughs) The pyrethroids... I guess they don't have a lot of humidity there, right? Yeah. In Egypt. (laughs) Right. So the pyrethroids and permethrins are the synthetic version of pyrethrins and, again, very toxic to cats. And many cats every year die because of treatments intended for dogs. Hmm. So if you have like a flea and tick killer that's that's designed for dogs, a lot of them have the pyrethrins in it and you would not want to use this on your cat. Hmm. When I was reading a little bit about the pyrethrins, I came across a research study that was done. Some of the bed bugs have been evolving so that they now have thicker skin, faster metabolism, and they have increased levels of enzymes that detoxify 
these pyrethrins and pyrethroids? Wasn't it when we were doing our bed bug podcast? I think it was like New York and Florida have really hard bed bugs to kill. Yeah, yeah very interesting. Stupid evolution. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So back to the topic of silverfish. <laughs> All right, another thing you can use in the house is boric acid. So this is another powder you can puff underneath baseboards and cabinets. And this works as a contact insecticide on some insects. It's a poison when ingested from grooming. Mm -hmm. This has very low toxicity to humans and pets. It's slightly abrasive and causes some dehydration, but very effective on any insects that groom. So this is the same thing. If it stays dry, it's effective forever? Yes. With ortho, they have their home defense max you can use inside if you're just looking for a, an easy spray to use. Bear Advance, they have their home pest control. Again, if you're just looking for a ready-to-use spray, both these products are rated very high. What I found interesting is while I was doing some research, I saw a bunch of sites on the internet recommending mothballs to, to kill silverfish. Huh. And what's wild is they're highly toxic. In fact, the EPA classifies mothballs as toxic. The vapor can cause headaches, nausea, dizziness, heavy exposure. If you have mothballs open up in your house and you get heavy exposure, it can cause vomiting and blood in your urine because it's basically destroying red blood cells in your body. Mm, nice. so, it, so it has serious impact to indoor air quality. So you never want to use mothballs inside your house very toxic. Since the title of this episode was going to be Silverfish, Centipedes, and Millipedes... I think we, we should shorten it just to Silverfish. <laughs> Do you want to talk about centipedes? <laughs> so centipedes, uh, kind, of, kind of a sim similar small insect, although they're not insects, they're anthropods, which are actually considered invertebrate animals. Duh. <laughs> which primarily live outside. They do get into the house sometimes. Centipedes, they can vary from one to six inches long and yeah. have anywhere from 20 to 300 legs. Yeah. Wild, huh? Yeah. Some of the large centipedes, they have venom, and if they bite you, it causes severe swelling. It can give you chills, and in some people, you can get anaphylactic shock oh, nice. because of the toxins. So these we have to kill? Yeah, so yeah, well, you, you definitely wouldn't want these in your house. But the, the main ones that you see in your house are called house centipedes, and they look completely different. Where uh, traditional centipedes are very long with a lot of legs, the house centipede is much smaller. It only is about an inch to an inch and a half long. It's grayish or brown with these dark bands down it with mm -hmm. 15 pair of very long, thin legs. Just really freaky, like very fast. And the house centipede primarily lives inside. They love high humidity, again, over 50%. So kind of all the same steps that we're taking for silverfish we're going to use for centipedes. And one research study I saw from a university, they were using all different types of spices and different material to see what they like and what they don't like. And they found that house centipedes don't like cayenne pepper. Okay, so, so what do you do with that? <laughs> So I guess you can put that around the house <laughs> and it'll dissuade them from coming into your house. And millipedes, which are another anthropod, they're sometimes called thousand leggers, although the record is 750 legs. Wow, who um, got to count those? Yeah, well, and they come in many different styles and shapes, the millipedes. So they, these are all kind of like worms, right? Yeah, worm-like with, worm -like like with all these legs. Yeah, really wild looking. They're Again, all gross. Yeah, they love moisture. You know, we, we want to control the humidity in our home. I hope nobody listens to this before they're going to fall asleep. <laughs> Or eat. And the, the biggest issue I saw with millipedes is the way you kill them. You don't want to step on them because they ooze this sticky, stinky fluid when, when you crush them. So you need to be careful how you so kill them. So what do you them. do? You, you want to use a spray, like one of those healthy uh, soybean sprays, and then scoop them up and throw them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Catch and release. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I think we should probably review what we've learned about silverfish and the extensive research that we've done on millipedes. Be very and careful how you title something <laughs> before you do your research. I would have downspouts at least extending five feet or longer beyond the foundation. Use a good border control. Control the humidity in your home. You want it under 50 percent for most of these insects. And then a hygrometer is nice to have around your house and you can really kind of fine-tune what's going on. Mm -hmm. 
I would always use a diatomaceous earth under the baseboard and sinks, completely non-toxic, or use some type of bug spray. And you won't have a problem with silverfish, centipedes, or millipedes. Yay. So anything else we need to cover? If you're putting down bug sprays and you have cats in the house, I would make sure that I'm reading the label. You would never want to use anything that's marked pyrethrin, pyrethroids, or permethrins. Are you going to spell those? No. (laughs) And we're uh, starting to write our first home improvement book. Yay. So I'm excited. We're going to be covering the topics from the podcast. So it should be a great reference for everybody. Absolutely. So I'm excited. And we'll let you know when that's finished. If you're interested in subscribing to the podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. You can subscribe there as well. If you'd like to email us, you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.